Hello there, Ray here, and guys, we have a brand new version of Minecraft. This is the first pre-release for 1.19.3, as well as pre-release 2. These snapshots and stuff that we've been seeing are not only for the upcoming 1.20 version, with the sniffer and archaeology, which I'll talk about later in the video, but they're also working on the next version for 1.19 to fix any bugs, so you don't have to wait all the way till the 1.20 full release for the next stable version. Now, they're planning to come out with the full release of 1.19.3 on December 6th. That's two weeks away on a Tuesday. So a lot of you guys were wondering if we were going to get a full release before the Christmas time, and it seems like we will. Now 1.19.3 will not have the new ability to play mob heads on top of note blocks, and it won't have the new piglin head as well. These are things that are just going to come out at 1.20. Now this is just the first pre-release, so we'll probably see a few more. With the different noises which are produced by having the heads or the note blocks, there was no noise for the Steve head. But now if you want to, you can come in and program a noise for this, which is placed in the note block sound field. So if you want to, you can give any player head its very own noise. Last week we got the new fill biome command. This allows you to select an area between two locations and then it would change the biome to whatever you want. Let's say you want to change it to bamboo jungle. But now there's also the option to replace only some of the biomes in that area with a different type of biome. So we're going to change only the beaches to bamboo jungle. So now if we look at this dark forest here, it's still a dark forest. But as soon as I come over here to where we had a beach, it's now bamboo jungle. This way you could easily switch out biomes without having to worry about messing up the nearby biomes. The new changes include new sub predicate types. So you guys all know those axolotls, but there's actually different variations of those, right? So they actually added those with the values like Lucy, the wild one, the gold one, the cyan, and also blue. This also applies to all the different types of boats. There's also red and snow fox, brown and red mushroom. There's different types of paintings, which you can type in their exact names so you get precise painting that you want. All the different rabbit types, the horse variants. There's also different llamas. There's a whole bunch of different types of villagers, including zombie villagers, professions, and their types. There's also the types of parrots and the more common types of fish. This way the game understands that all these variants are similar to the main type. Purple 2 brings us the ability to actually tab over buttons and the information about them will display. And if you happen to hover over with your mouse, they'll be off to the side of the cursor so they don't cover up the word so much. They also added fire charges as another way to ignite creepers but it seems like it doesn't actually use any items. So that part might be a bug. But if you join my live stream, you'll see that I actually came up with an infinitely automatic way to light charge creepers. Also, when locating structures that are very difficult to find, the game is now more optimized when looking those up. Let's quickly go through the bug fixes and then talk about archaeology and sniffers in 1.20. Higglin heads on note blocks were making the noise they normally make when they're mad. So this has been changed so that it's their ambient noise. Let's go play it. They fix it so skulk sensors will now be able to detect when players interact with the chiseled bookshelves. Because the new chiseled bookshelves have a slightly different texture on top, it was noticed that the texture doesn't stay the same even when it's rotated. So now you can easily use it as like a floor pad or a ceiling and it'll be consistent. The new vex texture was supposed to have a translucent bottom like the LA does. So now it looks like this. With the texture change made to vex last week, made them no longer sit properly when inside of boats or inside of minecarts. You might notice the lays weren't very good at pathfinding and would end up sometimes making circles. This was a problem just introducing snapshots, but it's now resolved. It seems with some recent changes to piglins, that actually made the suffocation point for the mob a little bit too high. Here you can see this red line, that means they'll suffocate. Here's a white line, this is the edge of what they can hit up against. Because the red line is higher than the white line, they can actually suffocate in blocks that they're technically not even inside. I noticed this on my stream and you can actually see the effect, which is when mobs try to hop through small holes, they take damage. Bees will no longer get stuck inside of non-full blocks like fences. Now some shorter mobs won't be able to hit players on top of the camel. This includes wither skeletons, cave spiders, spiders, goats, zoglins, pandas, blaze, slimes, and magma cubes. When villagers were in water, they weren't able to pathfind out. This bug affected a lot of different types of mobs. With the fix, you shouldn't have this problem anymore. In the deep dark biome where the skulk blocks are normally at, the world was actually generating too much copper. So take advantage of this before updating to 1.19.3 where this has been removed. Axolotls were doing really weird things when they're pathfinding and they would end up sometimes trying to walk towards the dangerous area instead of just completely avoiding it. Leave a like for 1.20. Sometimes on Twitter, the Mojang developers will give sneak peeks to upcoming features. 
And last week, Olruff put out this tweet saying this update is going to be awesome when it's done and dusted. Are you guys excited to see what else we're going to dig up for you? This sentence has two references to the archaeology update. The dusted part refers to using the brush to dust off the dirt so you can expose the artifacts. And the digging reference is to archaeology where they dig down into these structures to learn information about Minecraft's past. So I replied saying, I see what you did there. This most likely indicates that we're going to get archaeology in the full release of 1.20. Since 1.20 is not expected to come out until 2023, and the current features in 1.20 are already working fairly well. That means there's plenty of time to add archaeology in before the full release. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at RaysWorks so you get informed when I notice these things. Now archaeology was something they actually first showed way back in 1.7 for the Minecraft live event 2020. So we know that there's going to be brushes which a player can take. Looks like there's different types of them. These are things you're going to use inside of the structure. Now these new structures would be placed throughout the game kind of like how fossils are inside of deserts or swamps and you'd find these runes most likely hidden and then you would have to slowly excavate in order to not destroy the actual artifact. Now the brush is used to actually remove layers of the block and you can see inside some blocks there's nothing. In other ones you remove them and they will expose some artifact. In this example they're showing a diamond block but this one actually be in the game they would put something else inside there like a unique cool artifact that kind of explains Minecraft's history. Now in this illustration here, the person moves too fast when removing the layers on this block and causes it to get destroyed. So you want to remove the layers very slowly, that way you expose it. Now this here is actually one of the new things that they showed, which is a ceramic shard. There's different types. This one here is actually a picture of an ender dragon. And you're supposed to be going through this place looking for these new types of shards, but they'll also probably come out with some other things they can find in here. And the idea is you go through these structures looking for all these different relics from the past. Then you take everything that you've learned and you try to figure out what's the actual history going on at this settlement. Then once you find a bunch of these different types of shards, you can see here we got one as a tree and the sun in the background. This one's a skeleton. This one here looks like a vindicator. The one in the inventory was the dragon. Also looks like maybe the Alex character. Then you could take these shards and place them onto these new clay vases. On this one you can also see there's a shard of a cow. Now you can actually just right click them onto there and then they will stick onto there. And then this way you can kind of take something from the past and add it onto these new ones. You could then lay a fire underneath of each of these clay pots. Over time, this would cook the pot and put these paintings directly onto them. We're not too sure what exactly you could do with the pot, but it's most likely you can store stuff inside. Maybe you can store a whole bunch of something all in one block. And then maybe these pots can be picked up and it'll carry everything that's inside them. Or they just might be completely decorational. We really don't know too much about archaeology, but it's definitely going to center around these dig sites, which are going to consist of many structures, each of them probably offering something unique. The way these are laid out is probably going to be done in such a way that it's not going to be just easy looting like we've seen in other structures just with chests you come in and you just grab stuff and leave. They really want to illustrate how slow and tedious it is to actually acquire ancient artifacts that have been buried for many years. With this sniffer mob coming out 1.20 a lot of people thought it's ancient dinosaur like features was well, going to somehow tie in with archaeology. But keep in mind archaeology is learning about past human behavior where paleontology is learning about living things from the past. So the way they first presented archaeology means it wouldn't really be related to sniffers unless there was like a cave painting of a sniffer made by a human. Now in a way we already have paleontology in Minecraft as we have fossils not only in the overworld but also in the nether. These fossils are huge and give lore to Minecraft thinking what the world was back in the day that was so massive. And where did these big massive things go? Well, maybe the sniffer is one of these creatures that we see the fossils of. And those of you guys that follow me on Twitter will know that I do paleontology as a hobby. And I have been fortunate to actually unearth dinosaur age bones. The process is often extremely slow and the fossils are often so fragile that they'll fall apart without proper technique. A common misconception is that there's not very many fossils out there. But the reality is there is just so many fossils that the majority of them actually just get destroyed by mother nature in a matter of a couple of years without a single human ever being able to see them or preserve them. Now in Minecraft there really isn't any elements that would destroy this archaeological dig site but we still got things like endermen and creepers which could disturb it. I'll be live on Twitch shortly after this video where I'm designing new 1.20 farms for my farm everything series or check out this playlist of more 1.20 news or this one on simple farms and machines. You guys did it. We reached another milestone on Twitch 45,000 followers and with your guys' help we can reach 50,000 followers. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.